Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. If you're brand new here, welcome. I'm so happy that you're here. I am Iris Siriani, and in today's episode, I want to talk to you about what can happen when you start your spiritual awakening journey, why you can't use your new spiritual awareness to bypass your own healing and pain from your past and some of the things that you are going to learn as you start healing and as you embrace your spiritual awakening. So let's get started. So I've talked a few times about my own experiences and what catapulted me into my own spiritual awakening. But if you haven't heard, mine all started around the time where I lost a very financially lucrative career that was also very soul sucking. I lost that. Um, I had to deal with sky high debt. I ended a long-term relationship that broke my heart, even though I did the leaving. I lost my mom and my sister all within a year of each other. And eventually that got me to selling everything that I owned or giving it away except for my car and my motorcycle. And I went out on a journey to heal my broken heart reclaim who I was, figure out who I was, and figure out where I belonged because through my whole process, I didn't feel like I belonged anywhere. So I set out on that journey. One of the things that can happen when you start to lose things out of your life, and I did a video recently about why when you're feeling lost in life, it's actually a good thing. And I'll leave a link to that video below in the description box below. And if you're watching this on YouTube, there will also be a link in the top right hand corner. But when we lose so much in our lives within a very short period of time, to me, that always represents that you are being called to the next big thing in your life but also when you lose so much in your life you lose so much self-confidence and and self-esteem and for me it, it seemed like i couldn't rub two pennies together for long enough to get any real traction so whether that was financially or whether that was figuring out where I belonged and where I wanted to live and figuring out who I was. There didn't seem to be enough traction for long enough in order to get some momentum going in your life and getting back to that place where you would feel a, a sense of stability and safety. And my own experience was that my, my own awakening really left me completely unsettled in my life and when you feel that unsettled for such a long time it really leaves you feeling a bit unsafe in the world so that was my experience so at that point in my life I found it to be incredibly difficult to have to rely on other people for support because I have always been that person that would financially support and support in other ways as well in terms of emotional support. So now all of a sudden to have the tables turn where I had to actually rely on other people to help me get through a very difficult time in my life, that was really uncomfortable for me. And it, But it's also very humbling and it teaches one to be the receiver of other people's love and their desire to want to help you because people do want to help you during tough times and not be so resistant to help. So for me, I knew when I started to awake spiritually that something was really off within me and everything that I used to like 
I didn't like anymore. The lifestyle that I was living, food choices, the work that I did, even people, everything seemed to be uh, slanted. And in that place, because nothing resonated for me, what happened was, is I started to become interested in spiritual and esoteric things. I, I tried chanting and yoga and I went to meditation groups to learn to meditate and I started spending way more time out in nature instead of being around a lot of people. I found a lot of comfort and peace and grounding being out in nature and I'm a people person. I actually quite enjoy being around people but during that phase of my life I didn't want to be around people. I wanted to be in nature and be around trees and, and animals. And so I took psychic development courses. I learned to read tarot. And I also learned uh, several different healing modalities. And as a result of that, I started my coaching and healing business. And I loved the work that I had started to put out in the world and in the way that I was helping people. But there was, there seemed to be a disconnect here because I started to bring all of this wonderful new stuff into the world based on where I was at, my level of, of understanding of spirituality at that time. And it felt really good. But there was also that inner struggle of having low self-confidence and low self-esteem. And it really was the oddest thing because why would I feel so down on myself on the inside, but feel so good in my newfound spirituality? And like I said, there was a real huge disconnect in that. So what I didn't understand then, and what I have come to understand now is that you can't bypass your own healing and trauma with your new spiritual journey. Here I am, we're, we're evolving and growing spiritually and this feels really good and it feels so in alignment, but you feel that disconnect, like you can't bypass that because you actually, your past and your trauma, whether it's big T trauma or little T trauma, is what got you to where you are today. It has served you well in some way, shape or form, but we need to be able to heal and integrate our past and our trauma because that is part of us. All parts of us, the, the parts that we don't like, the parts that we wish we had done things different, the, the things that have happened to us, they are all parts of us and we can't deny any part of us. So trying to spiritually bypass because it feels so good will actually slow down your ascension process. So if you are on that spiritual journey and you are just really feeling good about life, but you feel that there's a bit of a disconnect in there as well, take a moment to heal pieces of you that are starting to percolate to the surface because you know what's what's bubbling up to the surface. But the problem is, is that we don't want to look at what was in the past because a lot of times, depending on the trauma and the pain and the heartbreak and the scars that are left there, we might not want to go and revisit it. But it is so important not to, to miss this step because it's going to want to percolate back up to the surface at some time for you to look at. And it's not easy, but I really encourage you to do that. So let's look at some of the things that you are going to learn as part of your healing and your ascension process. You are 100% going to learn to love yourself. And when I say learning to love yourself, it can mean looking in the mirror and repeating, I love you, I love you, I love you, which I do sometimes to this very day when I'm feeling a little bit bluesy and tune into the fact that I'm being a little bit hard on myself. I will still repeat in my mind or look in the mirror and just say, I love you, you know, 
you're great. You're doing a great job. Self-love embodies so much more than our self-talk. It's how we see ourselves. It's the value that we place on ourselves. It is the boundaries that we have and it is so much more. And you will learn to love yourself in a way that you never have before beyond all of the aesthetics, which is beautiful. There's nothing wrong with making yourself good, but it embodies so much more than that. And if you want to know where you are on your self-love journey, um, there's a link somewhere up here shortly where you can take a quiz that I've created to tell you where you're at on your self-love journey. And I'll also leave a link in the description box below. It's just a fun little quiz. Okay, something else that you're going to learn about yourself is how to accept all parts of you from your personality to your likes and your dislikes to how you look. Forgiveness is also wrapped up in here and I'm going to talk about that in just a couple minutes, but it's the acceptance, the full and complete acceptance of who you are and where you are at in your particular life at this particular time. Because sometimes we will judge ourselves based on where we think we should be based on our age or we should have accomplished more. Or we should be farther along. There is no comparison there. It is a complete acceptance of yourself and where you're at and really letting all of that be okay. Uh, something else that you are going to learn is to have compassion for yourself because you will need it because things will come up to the surface and you will really want to have, you will learn how to have compassion and kindness for yourself versus beating yourself up for not being able to figure things out or for wishing that you had a, would have done things different. Compassion for yourself and really compassion for others as well. And we're all on our own journeys and they fall out of alignment with where we're going and that's okay and we wish that they would be different and we wish that they could come along for the ride with us but they can't and so we have compassion for them and where they're at in their journey so with that you also learn boundaries because sometimes it's family members who aren't ready to join us on the journey. And so we need to establish healthy boundaries for ourselves, which is something else that you learn, is how to have boundaries, not just with friends and families, but in life and being able to have an awareness of what your capacity is for what output you have. And you have boundaries for, I only have this much available to give, or I have none available to give. And you don't beat yourself up and step into people pleasing just because that's a pattern that you've also always done. Which brings me to the next point. You learn how to unlearn people pleasing patterns. And so many people are people pleasers. And wanting to help people and to make their life easy easier isn't always a bad thing but sometimes we can get it caught up in these extreme learned people pleasing so through the awakening you learn how to unlearn being a people pleaser you also learn how to unlearn and heal unhealthy attachment patterns in relationship and learn how to feel more secure in relationships. You learn forgiveness and you learn forgiveness in the biggest sense. And forgiveness is forgiveness for yourself and forgiveness for other people as well. You will learn to trust yourself more and you learn to listen to what your body is trying to tell you because our body will always know well in advance of our mind that something that we're doing or something that we're engaging in is not right for us. So because the spiritual journey 
really does embody a level of self-awareness, you start to work inwards and you start to tune in to how you're feeling and then you start to trust what you're feeling in your body as a navigation system to this is good, this doesn't feel good, maybe I shouldn't be here, maybe I shouldn't be doing that and you get better at learning to trust your own intuition. You also learn that you are so much more than you ever thought you were or what you were capable of and who you could be. This is that journey of discovering who you are, building up your inner confidence and your self-esteem. And when that is in place from the inside out, as in meaning it's not artificial. You're not looking for the confidence and validation from outside. You actually start to feel it on the inside. You realize that you were so much more than you ever thought you were. And here's a really good one. You learn that everything is always working out according to a divine plan and that even though things might seem delayed or things didn't work out for us you come to a level of understanding that there's something called divine timing and that there is a divine plan and sometimes we forget sometimes I forget as well but I have to remind myself when things aren't going the way that I want them to there must be some bigger thing going on in the world that is going to move all of the pieces into place and click into place. And then once they click into place, then things will start to move forward again. So you learn to have that level of awareness as well. And on the heels of that, you learn to relax into your life. You don't, you tend not to want to push and control things you move now with a more ease and flow and just allow life to kind of unfold with still having an intention of what it is that you want to manifest and create for yourself and again sometimes we need to remind ourselves of this but you learn to to relax into your life and not be so mm, controlling or wanting to push things forward I want to stress that your spiritual awakening is not your ascension to being this perfect person. We live in this physical world. We're constantly changing and moving and adapting. So the more we can ease into life and just kind of flow with it and learning to trust ourselves, that really is the process. And it is an ongoing and evolving process of self-awareness and growth and tuning into what feels good and if it feels good go in that direction if it doesn't feel good try a new direction you also come to understand yourself in uh in a way that you never did because now you're learning who you are what you value, your wants and your needs and what you want to create for yourself and your life. You experience a level of inner freedom and you start manifesting from that place versus how you were doing it before, which is based on societal standards and how you should be and who you should be and conformity and, and restriction basically. And you will embrace who you have become and begin to show up in the world in and in your life in a much different way. You learn to reach for the things that make you feel good and adjust and make changes. And it's just a, a flow. It's like water. Water is a constant flow. It's constantly in motion and it doesn't try and go through a rock. It finds a way to go around the rock. And that's what happens as you evolve into this process. And the last thing that you'll begin to learn or begin to see is how you begin to attract different people and opportunities in your life as you start to do the work and carry on on your path. 
And I just want to finish up this video by saying Ascension is not a destination. It is that gentle unfolding of the you that has always been there. So I hope that you have enjoyed this episode. If you did, like this video, subscribe to my channel if you enjoy my content. And until the next video, until I see you again, take good care.